Welcome to the second video about Delphi REST servers written in Delphi XE. My name is Marco Cantu and I'm again a Delphi book author, consultant and trainer. And you can learn more about um, what I'm doing by following my blog or checking my website www.marcocantu.com. In the first video, we built a REST server using the wizard and simply followed the steps and created a an, um, an web application using JavaScript on the client side, uh, calling through our JavaScript proxy into the uh, Delphi REST server. Now in this second video, I'll shortly show you some extensions to the web server, showing how you can use life cycle management, how you can change the session, and customize the session data, uh, use authentication and authorization, and um, take advantage of some of the method call uh, features. In terms of lifecycle management, DataSnap offers three different options, invocation, which means that every time you call uh, a server-side method, a server-side object is created, uh, the method is invoked, and the object is destroyed. A server, which means the server-side object remains active on the server and multiple clients, multiple invocations can refer to the same server-side object. Or a session-based management, which means that for every session there's only one object being created. Now under REST, DataSnap does indeed handle sessions but does not handle the session lifecycle management. So the object will actually be destroyed and recreate it every time. Even if you pick session, it will default to uh, invocation management. But on the other hand, you can manually add session management abilities, as we will see. You can, you can add other session data by managing uh, name value pairs. In this demo, I've specifically set the DS server class to use invocation, but again, you get the same behavior even if you use session. This means that every time you create an object on the server, you're actually getting a new instance of the object. So suppose you have the server-side object that saves data. Uh, there is no way you can actually uh, retrieve the same data and at a second invocation. Now, the solution for this problem is to use sessions. Okay, so here I have a put data function that rather than saving data inside the object, it grabs the session from the data snap session manager and adds the data to it. And at the opposite, when I want to retrieve the data, what I will do is, is this get data method, again get the current session and ask for the data. This way uh, this, the, the, this string, this information, remain persistent. If we run this application and look what happens inside the browser, we can see we can actually indeed do put data, hello, and before we do it, let's check what's inside the data, there is nothing. Now we put the data, and now if we get the data again, we have the information, and another user from a different browser will retrieve uh, his own uh, data. The second thing this application does is manage authentication. Now there are actually two concepts in DataSnap. One is authentication, determining if a user is a known user, has a user payment password that we know of. Uh, at the same time, what we can do, we can add the user to one or more roles. Roles are used at the authorization level. Uh, we can implement a global event handler, so we can determine for each method being invoked if the user or the user in a given role has the permission to execute the method, or even better, we can attach a custom attribute to a class as a wall or an individual method of the server class to determine uh, if the user is allowed to execute uh, the method. In terms of code, we plug in this DS authentication manager component, which is hooked from the web dispatcher. We have a user authenticate event, and in this event, what we can do is basically validate the user against our database of users, or in this case, in a very simple way. And then we can, at this time, use some of the session information, like 
handle the username and also we can add the user to one or more roles. Uh, roles will determine the authorization that the users have. We can man manage this on user authorized event or even better we can go to the uh, target class tServer methods one and what we can do we can decorate the various methods that we want to limit to given users to saying it has to be in a given role like standard or admin so this calling eco string will be allowed only for the uh, users in the admin role in terms of using this application the browser will automatically present a username and password section now let's put in a username and a password following the rule now I log in and now I can actually call reverse string what I cannot do if I go to the other page the reverse function invoker is that if I am a user and I log in I can indeed call reverse string ASD but I won't be allowed to call eco string we say user is not authorized to perform the action only if I log in as admin I will be allowed to execute the server-side method the last topic I want to focus on for this video is to show some of the supported data types and some of the techniques you can use in terms of method calls this demo has a server methods one class that has a new method beside the standard ones managing different data types for example we have methods that return and take as parameters integers and doubles or booleans or just strings I can show you how to invoke these methods directly through the browser with this URL the server methods one add int to five we get the result seven the get large string method is similar it returns a large string but I've added it to demonstrate uh, another feature that uh, REST, Delphi REST servers has which is filtering we can ask for a portion of this string for example if I type in the substring count equals 12 parameter I get only the first 12 uh, elements of the uh, longer string but let me get back to the source code to show you some of the other data structure you can return one interesting thing you can return is an object uh, an object is just an object of a given local class what the system is going to return automatically through marshalling is the set of fields f age f last name f first name in fact if we ask for get person this is the JSON data structure we are going to receive back uh, there is the class name with the unit uh, and then the, the list of the fields of uh, the class we can also return more complex data structure but that's too complicated for a short introduction another data type you can return is a data set you can return a complete data set or else and that's also interesting you can return a full T stream like a file finally you can return custom JSON data structures by creating the JSON uh, right on the server side like for example here this get person JSON I'm creating a custom data structure for uh, the JSON so if I go for get person JSON I'll return a simpler and customized uh, data structure and what if I invoke the method that returns a complete data set let's see get customers and ho oh, we get the complete data set with all the records that the server had or had fetched from the database which is actually quite far so we have seen we have a lot of server features you can play with in a Delphi REST server but what about the clients I can focus in the, in the next video on JavaScript and see how we can improve the client side to create a real browser-based application again my contact information marcocanto gmail.com